Lesson 2.7, Interpret the Remainder in Division. We've got a link to 4th grade math 6.3 for writing fractions in simplest form, and the chapter 2 previous videos that we just learned, linked in the description. The quotient of a division problem should be increased by 1 or used as the answer if the objects being divided can't be less than one whole. So that would be living things like people or animals. We can't have a half a person or a third of a dog. Or items that need to be whole to work, like a car. Or appliances, like a stove or refrigerator or furniture. Can't have half a sofa. Or clothing, you can't have half of a pair of jeans. If a car seats five people, how many cars are needed for 13 people? We do 13 divided by five and we get two, remainder three. We increase the quotient by 1, so instead of using a 2, we use a 3, and we remove that remainder. So we have a car with 5 people, a car with 5 people, and we're going to need a third car. They need 3 cars, and there'll be 3 in that last one. The question was how many cars are needed for the 13 people, and the answer is 3 cars. Sometimes the remainder will be the answer. If one car seats five people and there are 13 people, how many will ride in the last car? So we still have 13 divided by five. That gives us two with a remainder of three. It's asking how many people are going to ride in the last car. The answer is three, the remainder. When the remainder needs to be part of the quotient, we can write a fraction of the quotient using the remainder as the numerator and the divisor as the denominator. Tala and Emma equally shared 11 cookies. Tala and Emma's, that's two people, so we're going to do 11 cookies divided by two people. That's five remainder one. We can say they each got five and a half cookies because the one is going to be the numerator and the divisor two is going to be the denominator. We have one half. They each got five and a half cookies. They split one cookie in half, and they each got five and that extra half. Context is the words that are used with or surround a certain word or phrase that will help determine the meaning of that certain word or phrase. If we see the sentence, Duke barks when the doorbell rings, from the context of this sentence, we can determine that Duke is most likely a dog. It's barking, it's probably inside the house because a doorbell is ringing, so it's not a wild wolf or a wild coyote, and it's not a seal. It's most likely that Duke is a dog. The remainder should be written as a fraction when the remainder needs to be part of the quotient. And the context of a problem determines whether the remainder should be written as a fraction. So for using the context of the problem, we're going to only use the quotient if the items divided can't be split into a fraction. We need them to be whole. We would increase the quotient by one if the leftover items have their own group or container. And the remainder is going to be the answer if the amount left over is the answer. And we'll make the remainder a fraction if the items divided can be split into fractions. When writing a remainder as a fraction, we need to write the fraction in simplest form. So 4th grade math 6.3 is linked in the description when we first learned how to write fractions in simplest form. If you need a reminder, we divide the numerator and denominator by their greatest common factor for simplest form. 2 and 8, the greatest common factor they have is a 2. We divide the numerator and denominator by that greatest common factor, we get 1 fourth. For 9 twelfths, the greatest common factor for a 9 and 12 is a 3. We divide the numerator and the denominator by 3, we get 3 fourths. And they're written in simplest form. So here's an example of writing the remainder as a fraction. A clothing manufacturer made 48 wedding dresses from 736 yards of fabric. How many yards of fabric was used to make one wedding dress? So we think. We first need to divide 736 by 48 to find the quotient and remainder. Then we write the quotient with the remainder written as a fraction in simplest form. We have 736 divided by 48. 
48 can fit into 73 tens one time. We write a 1 for our quotient above the tens place. 48 times 1 is 48. We subtract that and get 25 tens. We drop down the next digit, the 6, and we can estimate 256 divided by 48 as 250 divided by 50, which is 5. We write a 5 above the 1's place, above the 6 here. We do 48 times 5, which is 240, and we subtract it. We get a remainder of 16. And the remainder 16 can be written as a fraction. We put the remainder over the divisor. We have 16 48ths. We can write out the factors of 16 and 48. The factors of 16 are 1 times 16, 2 times 8, and 4 times 4. And the factors of 48 are 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 3 times 16, 4 times 12, and 6 times 8. And the greatest common factor they have is 16. So we divide 16 by 16 and get a 1. And 48 by 16, we get a 3. So in simplest form, it's 1 third. That means 15 and 1 third yards are needed for one wedding dress. So here's an example of only using the quotient as the answer. If a restaurant chair costs $18, how many chairs can be purchased for $1,236? So imagine a restaurant owner, this is all the money he has, and he needs to buy chairs at $18 a piece. We need to figure out how many chairs he can buy. We do $1,236 divided by $18, and 18 can fit into 123 tens six times because 18 times 6 is equal to 108. We can't fit another one. We write a 6 above the 3 for the 123 tens. We subtract 108 tens, and we get 15, and now it's the 6's turn to come down. Now we have 156 divided by $18. 18 can fit into 156 eight times because 18 times 8 is equal to 144. We subtract the 144 and we get 12 left over. And we can't buy a fraction of a chair, so we only use the quotient. He can buy 68 chairs. 68 chairs can be purchased. Here's an example of increasing the quotient by 1. Lisa baked 165 cupcakes for her friend's party. If one box holds 12 cupcakes, how many boxes will she need to deliver the cupcakes? We have 165 divided by 12, and the 12 fits into the 16 tens one time, so we write a 1 up here, and 12 times 1 is 12, and we subtract the 12 tens, we get 4. It's the 5's turn to come down. Now we have 45 divided by 12, and 12 fits into 45 three times, and 12 times 3 is 36. We subtract and get 9. We increase the quotient by 1 for the remaining 9 cupcakes. She needs 13 boxes, but now she has 9 cupcakes left over, She'll need 14 boxes, so that last box is going to have 9 cupcakes in it, won't it? So we increase the quotient by 1. So depending on the context of the problem, we're going to use only the quotient, we're going to increase the quotient by 1, the remainder will be the answer, or we'll make the remainder a fraction. So sometimes you'll have to read a word problem more than once to completely understand what it's asking of you and be careful of the context. In our next lesson, 2.8, we're going to adjust quotients if they're too high or too low when we estimate for long division. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope I see you next time. Bye!